Okay, uh, today I'm going to be showing you a video, uh, which of course I would not recommend to do at home. Uh, this is modifying ammunition. Uh, it is potentially dangerous. Don't do it at home. There we go. Uh, this is your standard 12 gauge, seven and a half shot, uh, seven and a half size bird shot, two and three quarters inch, what, like a you know, one and one eighth ounce of lead. Uh, you know, it's it's federal. It's the cheap shit you get at Walmart. Hundred rounds was like twenty four thirty four after tax, so barely over twenty four cents a round. And so that's your standard. This is your modified. Looks almost the same except for oh what is that? That is lead. It is enclosed by tape. And what this does, uh, as compared to this, so your regular uh will shoot out and Federal uses a double stage wand, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, but uh I guess the more common wad be would be a one piece, uh but uh Federal uses a double stage, which uh that's why I chose Federal because it's really nice for this. But you can still do it with, um, I think, Winchester and probably Remington, too. Probably a lot of the cheap shit uses this, because I assume it would be easier, and I see it all the time on the range. I hardly ever see the two-stage, so. Uh, but, yeah, you can do it with this, but if you can get the Federal, I just, I don't know, I like it better. Whatever. Um, so this, of course, you know how this works. It goes boom uh, within 25 yards. You get like a decent spread, but pretty much beyond 50 yards, it's just bird shot. It's not going to take down a deer, probably not going to take down a human, probably. I would assume. I don't want to find out. Um, so yeah, this, on the other hand, uh, pretty much acts like a sabot. Uh, it keeps all the shot together as one. It goes down the barrel barely wider than this would because the wad obviously goes with a shot. It's only wider because of the addition of the tape and we're talking like a fraction of a millimeter so nothing pretty much. I mean I again I would not recommend shooting this. I don't want to be legally liable for your dumbass killing yourself or hurting your gun or whatever. So don't do this at home. But if you do, <laughs> uh, this is pretty sweet. Uh, I shoot a uh, New England Arms, which I think is now H&R, uh, single shot, 12 gauge, you know, whatever cheap shit, 80 bucks used out of a gun store. Um, I shoot a hole that exact width through the, uh, the plywood at the shooting range of 50 yards. It's a smooth bore, so it's not super accurate, but if you hit a deer with it, or pretty much anything, you kill it. Uh, if you hit it correctly, of course. I mean, it, it acts just like a slug, except for when it hits something, uh, what does a slug do? It breaks into like three or four pieces. What does this do? It breaks into, oh, I don't know, about 250 pieces. So it's extremely deadly. Um, plus, with um, my quarter that I'll show you in just a second, you'll see that when it hits, especially something metal, uh, some of it molds together because of the heat and pretty much <laughs> creates a huge slug. So I, yeah, I think it's really cool. I mean, you can buy rounds that have like an enclosed wad, so it does pretty much the same exact thing, except the ones I found are like $2 a piece per bullet. This was about a little tiny bit over 24 cents. So yeah, uh, might as well, you know. Uh, I've had very little bad luck with these. I've had maybe two of them that the, all, all that happened was they failed. So the tape just opened up and acted just like this would have. So a failure still works like a regular bullet or shell, whatever. So, you know, I've had no, uh, of course, um, uh, probably should have mentioned this earlier. I do not shoot a gun with a wad, uh, or a uh, choke, I meant. I don't shoot with a choke. Uh, this might be bad on a choke. Uh, maybe not, because again, the wad with this goes through and that doesn't hurt the choke, but this is slightly uh, you know, slightly thicker, and it stays together as one unit. Maybe it's not as, I guess, malleable, you could say. Uh, so, you know, I, again, I wouldn't recommend shooting this at all, um, especially out of something with a choke. 
I don't know how a threaded barrel would take it, but uh, use at your own risk, of course. And uh, so this is uh, pretty much what you'll need. Safety glasses, of course. Uh, safety first. In fact, the safest way to do this is to not do it. Uh, and you'll need, of course, your live ammunition, um, a serrated blade. Um, it's this serrated, it's kind of hard to see. It's a very fine serration. Uh, tape. Uh, notice how one tape is wider. Uh, this tape is about as wide as a 12 gauge. This tape is not. Don't use the thin tape. Use the wider tape. It's, it's right about the same width as the shell, so keep that in mind at all times. This is the bottom of a uh, uh, soda pop bottle, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, a water bottle would work just fine. Cut it off. Uh, make sure it's at least three or four inches tall, as this one is. The lead will hit the bottom of the container, and if it's too small of a wall, it will bounce out. Uh, and it's very hard to take lead out of the carpet. Uh, a funnel. This one's a little big, but it still works. Uh, smaller ones are nicer, but the thinner the opening, the more chance you'll have of the lead locking up inside of it, which then um, I've had it where I've pulled out giggity, and uh, the lead has gone spewing everywhere giggity. Um, you could also use a already spent shell and use your reloading equipment and you could um, you know theoretically take your lead and tape it up just like you're about to see and load it that way so then it would look just like this when it was uh, crimped but I, theoretically I haven't tried it we still have the same effect so you could do that too possibly okay so you take your 12 gauge rounds the normal one um, and then, well, I guess I should show you. Oops, see this down. Uh, I don't know, it's two millimeters or so. God damn it. One second. Technical difficulties! Stupid camera. Okay, so, uh, two millimeters. Trying to give you a, just a little bit below, in other words. I mean, not a whole lot. When you cut your first one, you'll see where the wad is and you want to cut like right at the tip of the wad so you don't really m mangle the wad too bad and as you'll see I like to cut about halfway around uh, before I pry it open and bleed out the lead and of course keep in mind where your fingers are at all times you don't want to cut yourself it's about halfway ah, a little bit more I guess and of course you want to use a cheap knife um, as uh, you will be con as, as you saw, uh, you will be contacting lead and metal on metal makes knives dull. That's why you want to use a cheap knife. Let's back up. So then, um, pry that guy open. Boom. There you go. Uh, sometimes there will be one or two more pieces of lead stuck in the crimping, but not in this one. And then um, you just uh, complete the rest of the way around. Of course, keeping in mind where your fingers are at all times. And then... There you go. Take this part, throw it away. It's useless. Take one out. There you go. That is your wad for the federal round. You got the other part of the wad, as you can see right in there. So if you go like this, the powder doesn't fall out, which is why I choose the federal. Um, don't really care. The Winchester and Remington I haven't really had any issues with as well, but the ones that I've shot at least use the single stage and uh, double stage wad or two part, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I don't really like to use this type. I like to use this type when doing this modification. So uh, there you go. And now you take your tape, uh, two and a half inch piece maybe. Just enough to go around it uh, a little bit more than one so it overlaps, and I like to go about halfway through. Um, I guess you could call this a petal, because it, it kind of, if you were to bend them all out, it would be like a four petal flower, I guess. Uh, so I, get, I like to go about halfway through a petal, and you'll notice, I'll try to contrast it on the right of the workbench, I like to go uh, about two or three millimeters high and create a small wall. Because if you don't, you will notice you can't put all the shot back in. Because uh, the shell, 
um, thing, the part you cut off, uh, is high enough to, to enclose all the shot and since you cut it off you need to create a replacement. So carefully put the funnel in uh, as you don't want to bend down the tape and, um, and then of course pour your lead in Oops, get all the lead and then carefully pull this up because when you spill it, and you will, it will happen you will see it is a huge pain in the ass if you spill it be careful. Uh, it, or rather, don't do this at all. LOL. Um, that's a little too long. I don't know. Inch and a half, two inch piece. God damn it. Just cut the fucking tape. There we go. Uh, and then put it on there. Go over in that direction. So it goes all the way over and covers the top of the wand and enclose the lid partially and then you want to take another piece of tape pretty much the same size and do the opposite or well, not from the opposite direction rather uh, henceforth enclosing the whole lead into one delivery system whatever you want to call it and now you'll notice of course since we put the lead on and it went over uh, there are uh, tape on not lead, rather, and the so there are edges of tape pointing down, jagged little edges, edges that aren't flush. So what I like to do, this is optional, do it if you want or not. Take a tape, piece of tape, uh, roughly the same size as the original, and go over those edges and make them nice and flat. And I find, at least uh, um, when I've been doing this, that uh, it makes it pretty easier to get this back in there. So shove it in and. There you go. Done. So when you don't make a video of it, and you do it pretty fast, two, two and a half minutes per shell, um, I did some rough math, and it equates out to 40 to $70 per hour that you save as compared to buying the factory main shell, um, as compared to buying the this factory main shell and modifying it. Uh, the other one that purposely is set up for the same effect. So yeah, you can save a good amount of money. And honestly, I mean, I mean, I'm hitting that pretty hard, and that is not coming out. See, I mean, that's going to be in there. Uh, if you're going to be walking through the woods, uh, and you think that maybe you know if this is going to be exposed somehow, maybe on the butt of your gun or wherever you have one of those little things that slips into uh, ammo holder, whatever, and it's exposed and you think, oh, maybe a twig or a branch might poke in there and, and then I lose all my shot and then it's useless. Okay, we'll put a few more pieces of tape on it then if you want, you know. Think about what you're going to use it for and adapt. So yeah, done and done. So here is what happens when uh, one of these modified slugs hits a quarter. Um, first off, I'll show you this one first, I guess. Uh, at least we're both about a foot away. Um, as you can see, the shot, well, hopefully you can see, um, you can see the individual, what were once BBs, and it's now melted together to form sort of like a slug, and a little more part of it just fell off. It's really easy to crumble, but still, this is moving a few hundred, or a thousand feet per second. I don't know how fast this goes, but, but yeah, it'll fuck you up pretty pretty good. And uh fits real nicely into the quarter. Uh there you go. Almost fits in there. Uh oh, it, it's stuck on there for a bit. Um oh, it must be the other one. Uh this one you can clearly see where the primer was because I set this on a spent shotgun shell. And uh, you can see, well, I can see, I hope you can see it in the reflection, but you can see where the primer was and how it's how it was used, you, you can see the indent from the firing pin, and you can see where it says Made in USA, because it was, a uh, what's it, uh, federal? Yeah, Made in USA. Um, yeah, and this this one, the lead actually stuck on there. It, uh, it is m melded or melted with it or whatever. Maybe there's now one with the quarter. And this one is really nice. You can definitely see how it used to be individual pellets. They've been all sort of slightly melted into one. So yeah, so that's what happens when these things hit metal. Uh, I'm about to put away, but still, 
imagine what that would do on flesh of a deer or a bear or you know scrolling make bugger balls if it came after you or whomever um so yeah